Greetings YouTube and welcome to Bubble Hurling, I'm Bubble and today we're going to be talking about rotation and how that applies to you, or at least your favorite decks. So we're going to be going over what decks you're leaving, what cards from what decks you're leaving, interesting cards, and then just overall you'll have what you need to know. And feel free to let me know in the comments at the bottom if I missed anything in particular, if I missed your favorite deck or whatever. So, this guy over here, sorry I, I gotta figure out which way is which, <laughs> it is the Ginger Brute. He is coming out in the Throne of Eldraine set, which pre-releases at the end of the month, which is September. So... When he comes out, we're gonna have to kick out the last four sets, which is a little, uh, a lot for one set to replace. We have a little picture here for you to go over. Here we are. So, currently in standard, we have Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria, M19, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, War of the Spark, and M20. That's eight sets if I count my fingers correctly. And once the Throne of Eldraine is going to come out, we're going to have to kick out the four oldest sets from standard. This only applies to standard, of course. Which means we're going to have five sets instead of eight. So, Throne's kind of replacing, like, three, four, depending on how you look at it. Wow, those are some big shoes to fill. So, the sets that we are losing will be Ixalan, Rivals, Dominaria, and M19. Those are all going off to, if you're playing MTG Arena, they're going to be in the historic format, not the standard format. If you're playing regular Paper Magic, then that will be modern and everything that entails from there. And, by the way, the little baseball, cricket, core set 2021 things, uh, those are... Keywords for the sets that have actually already been revealed is going to be Theros um, Beyond Death, and then there's going to be some sort of a monster set for Cricket, and apparently in Corset 2021 there's going to be a whole lot of Teferi, so if you think he's gone, oh, he's just coming back in time. Anywho, without further ado, let's talk about the decks that are being hit, and see the cars that are leaving there. And there's no particular order, I just put them in the order that came up off the top of my head. I'm also going to be going over particular cards at the very end that didn't really necessarily fit into a deck, but still... I felt warranted some um, attention. So, let us begin. This is Mono White. Now, Mono White has largely been overshadowed and just taken over by Orza Vampires. There is a little bit of overlap, namely in Adanto Vanguard there, and Legion's Landing. However, Orza Vampires has basically taken their spotlight away and they're not even played anymore. So, I just want to address this. Um, that all, pretty much all the cards that made Mono White good are leaving. Therefore, if you wanted to play Mono White afterwards, it would not be this type of deck. I'm not saying there is no Mono White available once Throne of Eldraine comes out, but not as we know it. So, yeah, some big powerhouses leaving. Manolish Marshall. It's interesting that a lot of knights are leaving. I guess that, um, and they're reprinting, not reprinting, but they're making new knights in Throne of Eldraine. And I think the reason they're choosing to do that is because since a lot of them are leaving Standard through Dominaria, um, exiting the the scene, I suppose. It gives them more play space to work with. Instead of worrying about other interactions and buffing knights too much, they could just be like, listen, all the knights are out, let's get some new knights in here and see, we might even want to reach out them to see how they work. Alright, so yeah, those are some big cards leaving mono white. Basically, you can't play it as you used to. And here is the one that has basically replaced mono white. It is Orzhov Vampires, which we all knew was going to be um, in standard for a little while. Namely, M20 brought Sorin, the Vengeful Bloodlord, into, I believe that's him, yes? Not Impervious. The M20 Soren. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he brought new life, much new life, to vampires in that his minus ability, which you could play immediately as he came out, let you just play a vampire from your hand. So he came out at three mana, and you could play Champion of Dusk right away, draw some cards, gain some life, refill everything. Really powerful. And plus, his like one plus ability was Lightning Helix, another plus ability was just, you know, Lifelink, Death Touch. Really strong card. But unfortunately, his time is going to be short lived. Maybe not necessarily Soren, but the vampires as we have them now. So down to Vanguard, huge thing, hugely annoying thing to deal with. Um, certainly one of the backbones of the deck. Achievement of Dusk was their draw engine, as well as Dusk Legion Zealot to a smaller degree. Some people didn't choose to play Dusk Legion Zealot, but it is a notable inclusion. Um, Legion Lieutenant was just the big old buff everything in your side, and so without that they lose a lot of power. Legion's Landing is their, like, sustainability and being able to just churn out vampires over and over again, otherwise Champion of Dusk half the time and just draw one, take, pay one, maybe one or two. But with Legion's Landing, you continually make the vampire tokens. Uh, Sanctum Seeker is a way to close out the game, and Vona was just something usually seen on the sideboard as an interesting, interesting little, hey, I want to kill one of your guys now because I can, because, you know, something's annoying and I want to remove it. So like I said, these are all leaving. I don't know how many vampires are going to be replacing it. Um, in particular, we do still have Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is staying in standard, so you have that to look forward to. However, I don't know if Soren's really going to be as powerful without this huge armada, so we'll see how that plays out.
Going further, we have the Boros Feather deck. Now, it actually doesn't hit, be hit too much. You see it out of Vanguard quite often. Uh, yeah, he was played a lot. He's really good. So, Vanguard is leaving, which is, again, a huge, like, staying power, sticking force. Just a lot of aggression comes out of Vanguard. As well as Reckless Rage, which is their primary way to remove annoying creatures. Because they would just Reckless Rage, target their own... Um, ah, geez, they could target their own Feather, they could target the Arcanist, they could target the... 2 mana 2-2 two, two, hasty guy that gets buffed, hasty girl I should say, um, and then actually buffs them because you target it with it and then it survives the damage. Ugh, it's annoying. The 10th District, whatever version it is, Legionnaire, 10th District Veteran, ugh, you know, there's different, there's a story behind the 10th District thing. Anywho, they're still going to be keeping, you know, God's Willing and obviously Feather and the Arcanist, so, and Shock is going to be, you know, still in the, actually, is Shock reprinted? I believe it was, but I could be wrong. Um, so... Oh no, it was reprinted in M20, duh. So, they still have plenty of things to go for, plenty of um, options. However, these two are out. So, they might look towards other things, maybe more Aurelia, maybe some other kill spells that we're going to be seeing. We'll see how that plays out. Alright, now this is, again, kind of random ordering. Mardu Angels, I know, right? Like, whoever thinks of that deck. It saw some play, um, it got a little more popular, I should say, towards the end of the season, and now it's, well, it's going to be losing... Uh, at least one of his big hitters, Lyra, was huge against any sort of red aggression thing. You just drop this thing down, suddenly it's a big thing to get rid of. Your opponent has to sink 5 damage, usually a burn damage, into this, because if they're trying to do it with creature interactions, it's not going to be very easy. Um, since it has first strike and lifelink, you're going to gain some life anyway. Uh, and then once you manage to get this thing out there, either just keep it on the board as a blocker or just swing with it, you're pretty much in the clear. So you're going to need some other go-to defense against um, burn decks. And Respondent Angel is nice just as a, I mean, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three flyer is great. And then the fact that, you know, if you just gain enough life, it can start spitting out more flyers. Hell yeah. So Mardu Angels, they still have Kalia, um, although I don't think she's an angel. She's a cleric, I, if I recall. Um, we still have Aurelia as well. We're losing Shalai, which kind of hurts a little bit, but we have a few other demons here and there, so we'll see how that plays out. Alright, what have we now? Esper Control, or just Esper in general, my my favorite deck. Which unfortunately is losing our crown jewel to Fairy Hero of Dominaria, the one card win con. I know, right? So we are losing Cleansing Nova. We do still have um, Planar Cleansing, but for six mana and destroys a lot more things. Not only is it slower, but it's also tougher to work out. We have Kaya's Wrath, though, so we could try to work that out. Teferi Hero Dominaria has to go. We still have little Teferi. Uh, Teferi Time Raveler. So, and he is very, very strong. Even though he only costs three and stuff, he is extremely powerful. So don't underestimate little Teferi. However, our big guy, our big win con, has to go. Hopefully we'll find another win con coming up. I don't know. We'll see. Saddle of the Wreckage was only very, very seldomly played. It was played more towards the beginning, um, before War of the Spark. Really, even before, basically before Kaya's Wrath was, came out, because Kaya's Wrath kind of took that spot. But it's worth noting that Saddle of the Wreckage is leaving, as well as Hostage Taker, or like I like to call it, Hokage Taker, um, just because it sounds like a thing, and apparently means like shadow. I was like, okay, shadow, blue, and black is kind of shadowy. Anywho, we're losing Hostage Taker, which was a very good sideboard card against cards, decks like Mono Red, and other Sultai things. Um, actually, this her Sultai as well. Other things that like to stick a lot of creatures in the board, maybe have one particular creature. Um, also a great counter to Krasis, because even if they kill Hostage Taker and get their Krasis back, it dies immediately because it has no counters. And if they don't kill Hostage Taker, you get to play Krasis for as much as you want, as much as you have uh, mana for. And it draws you cards and gains life. It's like exactly what Esper wants to do. So, stealing Krasis was top priority, but now Krasis might be a little more likely to stay on the board. Uh, have fewer enemies, I'd say. Ixalan's Binding was usually a sideboard thing, um, just to remove pesky little things that um, wanted to stick around for a bit longer, so you could use that to remove any non-land permanent. So Planeswalkers, named Teferi, suddenly your opponent can't play Teferi. Although with Teferi Time Raveler, they just bounce that, get the card back on the board, do whatever they need to do. Yeah, they can replay Ixalan's Binding, but the damage has already been done. So it was interesting. Not really going to be seeing too much play, though. Obviously, it's out. I didn't really see too much. Now seeing zero. All right. Lyra Dawnbringer. Again, that was a sideboard card against aggro deck. So hopefully, we're going to be getting some sort of life gain or just big shield creature. Or maybe Esper Control isn't going to be so good. We'll see how we do. I got to stop ending everything with we'll see how we do. It seems very generic. All right. This is Kethis Combo. This is a deck that is 100% dead. Now, I'm not saying Kethis will see no play. He might. Um, he still has a very, very useful ability. However, the combo, which was involving mostly the last two 
Sorry. <laughs> Last two cards over there. Uh, Excavator and Mox Amber it relied on those two cards. Absolutely. I was like trying to think like completely. Yeah, just <laughs> that was it. The combo as we know it currently depended on those two cards. So without those two, you can't do the combo at all. Um, the other two notable are Tashar is Leaving Standard, as well as Urza's Runa's Blast. Although Urza's Runa's Blast largely only saw play in Kethis combo at the very beginning, at the very inception of the deck. And then as we developed it further, we realized that it was actually kind of too slow and unnecessary, and we could win very, very quickly <laughs> out of seemingly nowhere. So Kethis is going to be gone, or at least his combo is. Maybe we'll have to find a new combo. If it doesn't, then sayonara. Oh my goodness, mono blue. Yep, that, and I'm sorry the card's a little hard to read, but, um, you know, got uh, plenty of cards here to go from. Let me see, can I actually make this a little bit bigger? Here you go, on the fly, woo! Okay, that didn't help anyone. Let's see, a little bit bigger there, and okay, potentially more legible. So, chart, of course, was a big thing for mono blue, as well as other decks, and that's leaving, so losing some card draw there. Curious Obsession was their main go-to, so that basically kills... You see the number of cards here, you see just the sheer quantity of cards here. Mono Blue is gone. The only thing that's here that didn't really see too much play was Miss Cloterald. Um, after Autumn Burchett got a first place finish in, I believe, a Mythic Championship um, with her Mono Blue deck, and she was only playing one Miss Cloterald, the numbers of that dropped significantly. And then once we got the Spirit Pirate thing that has Flash that comes in, it basically replaced it entirely. So... Miss Cloterald is out, worth noting, but really didn't see any play either. Um, a lot of counterspells also going. Uh, let's see, I want to make sure, good, I didn't put Opt in here because Opt is actually being reprinted. So, and Throne of Eldraine, so that is safe. But yeah, also Tempest Jin was like a huge, like, they're a big creature to go to. And that's out. Trickster is seen in multiple decks. I mean, Merfolk isn't really a deck type as it is, aside from just Mono Blue. Um... Which is a few options for Merfolk there. But Trickster on its own is an amazing card. And that's out of here, so I should say out of there that way because that's actually pointing towards the cards. Mono blue is gone, I'm sorry to say. It's worth noting that in the Throne of Eldraine, they are trying to push monocolored decks because each color of magic uh, is supposed to be a different um, section, sector, oh, how do I put this? Um, each different castle, I want to say. Uh, or kingdom, there we go, that's the word, kingdom is going to be a different color. So they are trying to push monocolored things. So there could be a mono blue, but losing all these cards from Mono Blue hurts a lot. All right, what have we now? This was, I see pretty much all the same things. This is actually Simic Flash. So the only real addition is Syncopate. They're not losing too much. They still have the Frilled Mystic. They still have the uh, Flash Wolf thing that came out recently. <laughs> they still have um, what, Opt, I guess, if they want to opt for things. Um, there's plenty of cards because they usually have Opt, yeah. But there's plenty of cards that you can still run. Sinister Sabotage is going to be a really good go-to counterspell, because we are losing some counterspells. We got to see what actually replaces things like Essence Scatter, Wizard Retort, uh, Spell Pierce, or maybe there's just going to be nothing. Who knows, maybe it's going to be a very much um, counterspell light meta for a little while. Which it already kind of is, because Little Deferi, um, if you get it to resolve, shuts down all your opponent's counterspells like, as long as he's on the field. So... Counters were largely, or instant speed things that you want to play on your opponent's turn, generally speaking, um, took a huge hit with that. So maybe they're gonna gonna understand that Little Deferi is bringing them down and trying to not print too many of those cards, knowing that they're not gonna be nearly as powerful as they could be, as long as Deferi Time Raveler is available. All right, going forward now we have ah yeah, so this is a combination of kind of Bant Ramp and. You know, um, Field of the Dead, Steal Your Stuff, whatever. It, literally, that's the only reason Enchanting Melody's here. They didn't really see much play at all, really, but there was Band Ramp that played an Enchanting Melody, as well as Mass Manipulation. Now, largely, Mass Manipulation has taken over, and they just play that. Um, Rejuvenator is a very large hit to the Field of the Dead decks, even if you don't run Scapeshift, which a lot of um, Field of the Dead decks have chosen not to do. They just run Golos and a few other cards that make sense with it. I don't know, and Crasis and such. Um, and Cavaliers, of course. Rejuvenator was a very, very big card to drop on turn three, look for a land, ramp up to, um, to have four, and go into five mana to hit that five mana card e either by uh, to hit that fifth land on curve, either being um, Golos or being Cavalier or maybe a ramp up to Scape Shift and just have an extra mana. Who knows? But um, that is a very large hit. I tried playing <laughs> um, Field of the Dead without Rejuvenator. It hurts like a lot. I guess you could try to put in. 
Yerok to kind of make up for that deficit there. Um, however, Yerok, <laughs> Rejuvenator, um, flows very well into Yerok as well. So you lose in a big card there. And Scapeshift is gone. So that means that suddenly dropping a million zombies on turn four, turn five. I think it was turn five they usually go off on, but maybe turn four. Um, is not going to be happening. And certainly not the Teferi plus, a little Teferi plus into Scapeshift during your end step so that you have no response time whatsoever. And it's just, hey, you have anything, you have nothing on the board? No? Cool, I win. So that is going to be out. Field of the Dead is still a very, very real card, real deck type to play. Um, it's just not going to involve Scapeshift, of course, so it might be a little slower, a little more grindy. You might have more options to shoot them down, and it's also going to be less of an all-in deck, so consider that. If you can actually outpace them, you have a really good chance, as opposed to the other deck where it was literally outpace them or die, it could be outpace them or kind of grind them out. So there we are. Mono Red, yes, Mono Red is taking quite the hit here. A lot of big guys have to go, and by big guys, I mean little guys. The Fanatical Firebrand, which is a huge pain in the ass for any control player, because they're just like, well, they have the damage on the board, I can't counter the creature ability, so yeah, I'm dead. Um, that hurts a lot. Also, they're very early enablers for a lot of the stage. Still in standard, but now they lose a bit of the aggro, a bit of the potential there. Gitu Lava Runner, of course, again, a huge play. Um, it's worth noting that with losing these cheaper cards, Mono Red is not going to have as many explosive turns, potentially, with Experimental Frenzy, if they even still play it in this next standard. Because you're not going to be able to do, okay, one drop, one drop, two drop off the top of the deck, suddenly my board's here again, you wipe it again, fine, one drop, you know, Firebrand, Firebrand, Lava Runner, Pyromancer, you know, all of those, shock, 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 whatever it is. So, that's going to hurt Frenzy inadvertently, or perhaps indirectly. Uh, so, Firebrand is leaving, Lava Runner leaving as well, Wizards taking a little bit hit from that. The wizard type, not the Wizards of the Coast. I think they'll be fine. Uh, Chain Whirler is gone, meaning that pretty much any one health, one toughness, I should say, creature on your side of the board is now, like, infinitely safer. Because it used to be that you just couldn't really play too many one health things against Chain Whirler, because, God forbid, they play Chain Whirler turn three, turn four, whenever, your board's gone, right? So now with Chain Whirler cycling out, um, your one health dudes are a lot more safe. A lot safer, a lot more safe. I don't know. I think safer sounds better, but whatever. All right, Lightning Strike is going. It's kind of odd because it's been reprinted so many times. If it's not in, and we haven't actually seen all the cards revealed in Throne of Eldraine, so it could very well be reprinted soon, but I don't see it yet. So I'm at the time of this recording, it's not reprinted. So that's interesting, just having that go away. Um, perhaps they decided there was too much burn with having Shock and Lightning Strike and Wizard's Lightning all in the same standard. Worth noting, which is lightning also, sorry, out of there. So, oh god, focused you. Okay, thank you. I was like, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> and what else? Pyromancer also leaving a huge wizard thing there. So, wizard's lightning is taking a few wizards with it. Um, mono red will not be the same. There is potential for a big red cards, which I know Day9 and Nox has been playing around with. Um, among other people as well, I'm sure. So we'll see how that goes. But as it stands, this kind of red is leaving. It's worth noting, though, with Eldraine, we have the artifact um, equipment, I th believe it's called the Embercleave. You can flash it onto one of your creatures, and it gives it uh, double strike and plus one plus one, and you can just put it, and it gets reduced based on how many creatures are in combat. So we could still see a whole bunch of little guys attacking, and then you winning out of nowhere with double strike on the one that isn't blocked. But it's going to be probably less burn spells and more combat-based. Alright, what do we have here? Dinos! Yes, yes, Dinos is another one that saw some new life in M20 with... What brought it back to life? Um, it wasn't Galta. I mean, there was Rotting Registaur. And then there was... Oh, yes, of course. There was... Um, not Rampaging for Ocidon, but there was the Marauding Raptor, I believe is the card. Where it makes your dinos cheaper and they take damage, but then you still play them and it buffs itself when it does that. Yeah, so that brought new life to dinos and actually was a very, very strong deck. Unfortunately, we know that as well is short-lived. Makes me wonder, why are they reprinting cards that bring back old sets just for like a month? And then they're out. Who knows? But anywho, Otepic Huntmaster is, was a very good card to help ramp up your dinos, and that's out of here. Uh, Carnage Tyrant was seen um, basically to counter any sort of, um, whatchamacallit, control decks. It was a huge thing, um, largely hard to get around of aside from just board wipes. Like, you usually didn't have creatures that could fight it, and that's the only way to combat it, so... Yeah, that guy's seeing, uh, <laughs> that guy's has to go, so potentially we'll see some other thing to counter control decks. 
uh, commune with dinos, all these things are leaving. Register Alpha is the big one that gave all you dudes haste, and Brontodon was very useful to potentially get rid of your opponent's search for his Kanta, or maybe, what else, enchantment. Um, artifact, you can get rid of um, an enemy Immortal Sun, or something along those lines. Icon of Ancestry, you're facing against vampires like that. But those are all leaving, as well as Ripjaw Rapture, which is the Cardra engine. So, I believe dinos, probably not gonna see a whole lot of dinos in the fairy tales. So they are... out. Sorry, I had to take a second there. I still get it wrong. Every time. Alright, following that, this is actually, I know Agnabry Drake really didn't see much play there. This is actually Phoenix. This is a Phoenix. So, we're losing Tormenting Voice and Agnabry Drake. Phoenix is still in the current standard. And the following standard, whatever. Um, the one we get with Eldraine. Current, next, whatever, you got my, you, you get what I'm saying. Ah. So we are losing a decent bit of cycle there, a bit of a card draw, and Enigma Drake really didn't see too much play after his first inception. I think after like the first couple months, they just took out the Drake and put in more cycling cards, other cards, um, to work with the Phoenix. But Phoenix is still in there, and I feel like Phoenix is going to see some play, even with Run of Eldrin coming out. Uh, interesting to note that a lot of the creatures that you have have adventure, and that is an instant or sorcery. So you could use creatures to power up Phoenix and then replay the creatures later on. And you curve out almost <laughs> having creatures that have a lower uh, adventure cost and then have a regular casting cost almost guarantees you curve out well every time. So this could be another, this is a little side note here, this could be another attempt by wizards to help avoid having dead hands. Because you could have, you know, an expensive beanstalk giant, but the, you know, cost to play the adventure is really cheap. So you do that, and then it helps you curve out later on. Um, worth noting. But I think we can look forward to seeing more Phoenix in the future. Look forward to it if you like it, I don't know. And what do we have now? We have Soltai. Yes, yes, we're getting down towards the end. We're almost done, trust me. Alright, so here is Soltai. We are losing the Explore package, which was applicable to multiple decks. It see, saw some play in the Dread Horde. Um, deck with a whole bunch of planeswalkers, but that's out of here. So goodbye to all your life gain and stuff and cycling through your whole deck. Brunt has gone. Vivian Reed, big card, even just for mono green and such. That card's leaving, and Hostage Taker is going as well. That's gonna hurt a bit. I don't know what the new Soul Tie is going to look like, but these cards have to go. The biggest hit here is going to be the Explore package. It was reliable. It was sustainable. It was very very nice to have. Um, it's just a go to. Here's a bunch of cards. I mean, ones. It's a four of each one. So four, eight, twelve. Guaranteed slots in your deck, and saying you're running like around 25 land, just throw that number out there. That's 34, not 34, 39 cards already taken care of, which means you only have to worry about 21 cards. Maybe it's a bit of a deck building constraint because those are mandatory in Sultai decks for the most part, but that's going. We got to figure out new things, guys. All right, Mono Green is taking a hit largely based on the previous things. Um, also, I didn't really mention it, but Golgari apparently is cropping up again, and Vine Mare is seen quite a bit in Golgari, so that's gone, but just Mono Green Aggro, Steel Leaf Champion is gone, that was a huge card, that was a huge pain in my ass, honestly. Um, Galta, again, just a big, drop that in like turn 4, turn, you could probably drop it on turn 3 somehow, but usually 4, 5, maybe even 6, but 6 is actually pretty slow. 12, 12, Trample, close out games, yeah, games are going to be asking a little bit longer now, and Vivian Reed takes away that reliability, also it stops a lot of the counterplays. I used to stop a lot of counterplays, um, being able to remove Prison Realm, let's say, or Conclave Tribunal. Now, your card's gone, basically. Although we probably will see a little bit more artifact removal, because there are a lot of artifacts coming out in Throne of Eldraine for flavor. If you get that, you get that. All right, and now we're going on to the lands, and then after the lands, there's going to be a few other cards. I'm going to try to go through them really quickly, um, kind of like a speed round, just for cards that aren't really seen too much um in regular mainstream decks but worth noting all right so these are all the check lands that are leaving we'll see what lands they come up with in throne of eldraine they do have some lands with basic land types like the witch's cottage but they aren't actually basic and this promoting more of a monocolor thing there as well as oh, i forget what it's called exactly but the new keyword where if you pay at least three of that colored mana to play the card then it gets a bonus effect or potentially just a different effect so there is that, almost like Devotion. So they're pushing Monocolored, which is, I suppose, their way of making up for losing all these check lands, as well as Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin's leaving, um, which is a card that we saw quite a bit with Golgari. Land Destruction, probably not going to be seeing as much of that going forward because, like I said, Monocolored is going to be a thing. Unless these non-basic but still Monocolored lands are, you know, really strong, even then I don't think it's going to be worth it. 
Okay, and now here goes the lightning round, whatever, in no particular order. Actually, it's an alphabetical order. Alphabetical order because that's the way the thing sorts them. Angrath Flame Chain, kind of cool. Still some playing Grixis. Um, yeah, so he's just gonna have to go. Banefire, the uncounterable thing you put in with, usually in a control deck to counter control decks. Um, basically only seen in Jeskai, potentially sometimes in Mono Red as a sideboard card. That's out of here, so you're gonna need some more reliability against control if we have any. Cabal Stronghold means that Chromatic Black has to go. I think the Lantern's gone too, but even if it's not, Chromatic Black is no longer a thing now. Sorry. Cast down, we're losing some removal. We are getting the Heroic Downfall Adventure as part of the Zombie Knight card. Um, which is going to be very, very powerful. It's a three drop, and I think it's going to be very, very strong. But currently, cast down is out, so removal is going to be a little bit lesser. Uh, Crucible of Worlds, kind of a random card they threw in there. It was largely a sideboard card. You could play it in Golgari Land Destruction to be able to replay your Field of the Dead, not Field of Ruins from the Grave, um, or you could play it against that if you're playing Field of the Dead because they know they're going to try to kill your spell, kill your uh, lands. So it's like, hey, look at that, I can play more lands. Not really great, more of a gimmick card, but kind of fun. Helm of the Host, again, a fun card. You can play this with Karn, and then the Karn that animates things from War of the Spark, and then you can equip this to the animated artifact, usually the monument, and <laughs> and then you can just create more monuments and clone them, and it was, it was so very, very silly. So a lot of memes are going to be leaving with this thing. Sad to see you go. Jace Gunning Castaway, yes, Handsome Jace. The only thought about this card is that I saw some play at the beginning of War with the Spark where there was the combo to make infinite Bolas's, um, Bolas, God Eternal or God Dragon, whatever it was, um, you know, the, the new one. And you could just make an infinite number of those and then exile your entire opponent's hand and then win the game. Without that, and we haven't actually seen that play for quite a while, um, he's gone. Unfortunately, he's so handsome, but he has to go. Car and Scion of Urza. I have a friend that regularly comes into my um, my stream that <laughs> likes to put Karn, this Karn, in like every single deck. And he's also pretty good. So you know what? It works for him. Karn's pretty strong. Used to be seen quite a bit in Esper Control as another way to close up the game, making a whole lot of Karn structs. Also added some speed to your thing with, you know, getting your choice of two cards, getting your opponent's choice of two cards, and then getting whatever you want. So basically extra card each turn. Um, so he's got to go and it's sad to see him go because I know my friend is definitely hurting on the inside. Lenore Elves, so this is a big one. It was very surprising not to see this printed, especially because there are going to be some elves, you know, in fairy tales, but not that one. So Lenore Elves is out, the Gilded Goose is in. That is basically the <laughs> the Gilded Paradise, or, um, Paradise, Gilding, Chicken, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Goose of Paradise. So that's a new card. Look it up for Throne of Eldraine. It's called Gilded Goose, just because I know I threw a lot of names out there for you. And it largely does what Lenore Elves does, um, although it costs a food token to... or food artifact token? Yeah, token. To um, make the mana, but it makes whatever color mana you want. So that's your replacement. It also does cost one green, but Lenore Elves is gone, so Elf Tribal Synergy taking down quite a few notches. Uh, this is just another thing that hurts the elves. Elf Ball is basically gone, because this is a huge go-to to make a whole bunch of mana, and sorry to say, it's out of it. I also saw some play in a lot of meme decks where you could untap Marwyn for a cheaper cost, and then tap her for a bunch, and, um, make basically infinite mana. She's gotta go. Masterminds largely goes back to Chromatic Black, a little bit of Esper, but not really too much. Didn't see a whole lot of play at the end of the standard, and, well, now it's gone. We do have a card in blue that's actually going to be able to let you get cards from outside the game, so we might still see that sideboard interaction, even in best of one, but not with this card. Nexus of Fate, people are gonna be so happy to see it go, my god. I'll be one of them. Um, geez, Nexus decks, even though they didn't really see a whole lot, they actually did start to see some play in Field of the Dead decks, just because why not? You make a whole lot of mana, play Nexus of Fate, get the card going. It's stupid. And the stupid card is now gone. You're welcome. Bolas the Ravager is just a hit towards Grixis. Uh, you still have 5 mana Bolas, but losing this 4 mana Bolas, which is very, very strong, um, it hurts a lot. And so Grixis kind of cries in the corner. I don't know if Grixis is even going to be a deck going forward. Probably not. I think a lot of three-color decks aren't going to see a whole lot of play, just because they're pushing monocolored. So three-color is going to be <laughs> really hard to do. Psychic Corrosion, you still have Drowned Secrets, but I just thought I want to make this as a side note here. Mill decks, there aren't really any top-tier mill decks at all. But if there were any, this card's gone. 
if there were any, it was largely petitioners too. So, sad to say that you got taken back a notch. Rampaging Ferocidon, a very, very interesting card they decided to unban at the very end of the standard. Not even like a new release, they just said, okay, so this card's fine now, and you have about a month to play it. Not sure why they even bothered with that, but they did. So, um, just worth noting, this is out of here. This could potentially have countered Field of the Dead decks, making all of the tokens, because they'd be limited to just creating as many as they have life, but... Now they can't even have this as a counter, so who knows. Rekindling Phoenix, a card that I liked quite a bit. I actually tried to play this in a Mardu deck, unfortunately, I didn't have enough wild cards to do it. Arena player myself. So, I love the card, I think it's great, and just the flavor's there, the power's there, and now the power's gone. I'm sad. Search for us, Kanta. Yes, this didn't see as much play when uh, three mana to fairy came out because you could just balance your, your opponent's as Kanta and get some added value, and then they have to replay it again. You're the counter at that point, or just like, oh well, the damage is done. But it is leaving, which means that decks that play blue, usually it was Azorius or usually Esper um, control, um, get a large hit there. It actually could have been Demir. Um, but yeah, they're going to lose a lot of consistency, a lot of their added card advantage, so that hurts, as well as all the other searches, expeditions, as they were called. They're all cycling out, but this is the one that hurts the most, I believe. July, Voice of Plenty, not really a whole lot going on there. That was largely some Mardu Angels kind of card. Um, you also saw her sometimes in Jeskai. She was basically only used for her second, her metal ability, because flying's the first. Yeah, I counted. Um, you usually didn't play her at all for the green. Um, she could see plenty of play outside of green decks just because all the other things having hexproof is very, very powerful. And so her shield, her defensive powers are now leaving standard. Goodbye. It'll be interesting to see what we replace you with, but you didn't see that much play anyway. And Thaumatic Compass. Oh my goodness. Oh, Thaumatic Compass. So this card is largely just some of the glue that holds giant decks together. Um, it searches out basically and then it can flip over and basically stall out your opponent's... Um, creatures when they try to attack you so yeah a whole lot of meme decks a whole lot of jank things ran this as sort of land guaranteed land drops um but largely having more monocolor decks coming out in throne of eldraine searching for basic lands isn't really going to be as effective because you're not going to need so many different colors let's see and the immortal sun let's see his treasure map afterwards treasure map also kind of goes well with throw i'll go back to the immortal sun with the mighty compass they were just like hand in hand jank feeds jank which is just like amazing <laughs> um all those decks all the silly jank decks love to play that and i use jank endearingly i don't mean that it was like a horrible deck i mean that it was just a kind of a silly meme deck that could win could definitely just combo out of nowhere and these things made it much more reliable so your reliability is going out the window now Good luck. I still love to see some more jank things. I made plenty of jank myself, but unfortunately, it can't work with these anymore. And the Immortal Sun going back, largely just used um, as a sideboard card with Karn in order to pull it out to counter other Planeswalkers. Also, you can see it sometimes in Sultai because you have a lot of creatures, but just to counter Planeswalker decks um, as a whole, it's gotta go. I guess it did its job trapping the Planeswalkers there, then Bolas died because Gideon and Blackblade and Liliana betrayal and stuff. So the story's played out now. Now on to a new story. Eldraine. Fairy Tales. Segway. And let's see, is that all? No, we have Vraska Relic Seeker. Also doesn't see too much play. Usually Vraska 4 is actually the one that gets played, that has the ability to destroy things that cost three or less, and then you can destroy a card and then draw a card you gain life. Very strong card. This one, not as much, although it is a very pretty strong. It is also a single card win condition. However, it just costs too much, and a lot of the decks now hit too fast, <laughs> too hard, too fast, whatever you want to say. So this card had to exit the building, and you know, it's nice, it's sad to see it go, honestly, though. Her and Jace, I ship it. And let's see, Vraska's Contempt, there she is again. That was used to be your go-to to remove Planeswalkers and creatures, just whatever you want, and gain some life. Used to be great in for Control. However, then we got D-Spark, then we also got Tyrant Scorn, so it wasn't seeing too much play. So this as it is, I think it could see play, if it was still going to be in the standard, in model black decks going forward, but that's gone. And notably, it exiled cards, so maybe we're going to see some more exile, maybe not. We'll see if uh, more cards end up going to the graveyard. And I believe this is the final card. Yes, it is. The final card is Zakama Primal Mama Day 9 would be proud. Um, 
along with all the other dinos leaving, this was like the top of the top of dinos. The large you didn't see actually, actually see play in dino decks as they were jund. Just replaced the white symbol with black and that was jund. Um, but still a card worth noting. Near and dear to many people because if you actually managed to hard cast it, which you almost never did, you got to use whatever abilities you wanted to. Perfect for any format, really. Perfect for any matchup. You could just find whatever works best for you. Um, and it's got to go now. Sad to see you go, Zakama. You will always be the mama to me. Anyway. <laughs> um, so that is it, though. I'll just finish with this little info for showing you what cards are coming and going. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you like this, I'm going to be trying to put out some videos rating the cards from the Throne of Eldraine. Hopefully a little bit shorter. This is a lot of cards to go through because there's four whole sets rotating out. I'm sorry, but not sorry for the video being the length that it is. So if you enjoyed this at all, please feel free to subscribe, like, I know I don't actually post very often. I'm really going to try to make some more dedicated, like, stick to a schedule and put, car put videos out. Not necessarily on a regular basis, but just more frequently because, let's face it, like, the last video was, what, how many months ago? Exactly. So... If you enjoy this, also feel free to follow me on Twitch if you'd like to. I stream there regularly, three nights a week, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday in the morning Eastern Time. I know it might be a little early. If not, feel free to just check out the videos. Without further ado, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, so, good night or good morning, depending on what time it is for you. But as always, good luck with this new standard. <laughs>